We now learn about integration by parts. Integration by parts is a method for integrating the product of two functions. That's two functions being multiplied together. Now it's important to realize that there's no set method for integrating a product of two functions. And we typically learn two methods. The first being the method of substitution and the second being integration by parts, which is what we learn here. Now here's the formula. The integral of u dash of x times v of x is equal to u of x times v of x minus the integral of u of x times v dash of x. And we can also write this in terms of definite integrals, which would look like this. The integral from a to b of u dash of x times v of x is equal to u of x times v of x with lower limit a, upper limit b, minus the integral from a to b of u of x times v dash of x. So how does this work? Well, the idea here, focusing on the left-hand side of the formula, is to choose u dash of x and v of x such that the integral on the right-hand side, the integral of u of x times v dash of x, is simpler to integrate. In other words, we may be faced with an integral which is a product of two functions, and that's difficult to integrate. So we want to break it up and write it as u dash of x times v of x so that the integral on the right hand side u of x times v dash of x is simpler to integrate. Now let's go right ahead and work through a few examples to see how this is done. As a first example, let's see how to integrate the function defined by 2x times cosine of x. So first things first, we can clearly see here that we're trying to integrate a product of two functions. Indeed, we have 2x, which is multiplying cosine of x. And we'll do this using integration by parts. Remember, the formula was the integral of u dash of x times v of x equals to u of x times v of x minus the integral of u of x times v dash of x. And so just as we said previously, the idea here is to make sure we choose the functions on the left hand side, u dash of x and v of x, so that the second integral on the right hand side, u of x times v dash of x, is simpler to integrate. So how do we do this? Well, one thing is look at our function here, 2x cosine of x, we can see that if we were to choose 2x as v of x, then in the second integral on the right hand side, v dash of x would just be equal to 2. And that's looking pretty good. That's quite simple to integrate. Furthermore, we can see that if we choose that, cosine of x by default would be u dash of x. And that would mean that on the right hand side, its integral u would be sine of x. So we quickly see that if we say that u dash of x is cosine of x and v of x is 2x, then the integral on the right hand side becomes much easier. We just have to integrate 2 sine of x, which we definitely know how to do. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to say let u dash of x equal to cosine of x and v of x equal to 2x. Then we'll need u of x, which will equal to sine of x, and v dash of x, which equals to 2. Now, using the formula for integration by parts, we can go ahead and write that this integral, 2x times cosine of x, equals to ux times vx, or v of x, I should say, so u of x was sine of x, and v of x was 2x. So u of x times v of x is sine of x times 2 of x, which is the same thing as 2x times sine of x. Minus the integral of u of x times v dash of x. So u of x was sine of x, v dash of x is 2, so that would be the integral of sine of x times 2, which is the same thing as the integral of 2 times sine of x. And now we can definitely integrate this. So we carry on here, that's 2x times sine of x minus 
the integral of 2 sine of x would be negative 2 cosine of x. And because it's negative, we'll make sure to write those in parentheses to avoid a sign error, so negative 2 cosine of x plus some constant of integration, c. This leads us to 2x times sine of x plus 2 cosine of x plus c. And we're done. We've just integrated this product of two functions using integration by parts. Now when we start these, one of the trickiest things really is to determine which function we're going to call u dash of x and which one we'll call v of x. And the reality is that really comes with practice. And we quickly see if we're going in the right direction or not. For instance, had we chosen to do things differently, and I'll just squiggle this there, let's say we had chosen u dash of x as being 2x and v of x as being cosine of x, then we would have found u of x would have been x squared and v dash of x would have been equal to negative sine of x. And so the integral on the right hand side, this one here, that integral would have turned into the following. So it's the integral of u of x times v dash of x. So that would have been x squared times negative sine of x, which is the same thing as negative x squared times sine of x. Now just take a second and compare this integral with the initial integral we were given. It doesn't take us long to figure out that that is not the way to go. We can see that we've complicated things. We ha definitely haven't made our lives any easier. This integral is definitely more difficult to integrate than the first one we were, we were given. So, if nothing else, trial and error will lead you to the right answer. And furthermore, as a rule of thumb, when doing integration by parts, we're often given something looking a little bit like this, sometimes more complicated, but sometimes like this. And in this particular integral that we had to do, we can see that we were given cosine of x, which can be differentiated again and again and again and again. It'll never vanish. It'll never disappear. On the other hand, the other function we were given was 2x. And all we need to do to, I want to say, get rid of 2x is differentiate it once, and we're left with just 2. And we can deal with 2 multiplying another function, that's not a problem. So, as a rule of thumb, you'll often want to call v of x the function which disappears after a single differentiation, or sometimes two di differentiations. That's often the way to go. Now, let's look at another example. Example 2. Let's find the integral of 3x minus 4 times the exponential function e of x. Now looking at this we can see once again that we're dealing with a product of two functions. Indeed we have 3x minus 4 which is multiplying the exponential function e of x. So we'll do this using integration by parts. Now remember the formula was the integral of u dash of x times v of x equals to u of x times v of x minus the integral of u of x times v dash of x. So looking at our integral, which of the two functions, 3x minus 4 or e of x, should we choose to be v of x? Remember, v of x in the formula turns out to be v dash of x in the second integral. So looking at our integral, if we were to choose v of x as being 3x minus 4, then v dash of x would turn into 3, which is definitely simpler. We also make a note of the fact that by default, exponential of x, e of x, would be u dash of x. And therefore, u of x would just be exponential of x again. So we wouldn't be making things particularly complicated. We wouldn't be changing much there. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll write let u dash of x equal to e of x and v of x equal to 3x minus 4. Then u of x 
would equal to e of x, and v dash of x will equal to 3. Now, using the formula for integration by parts, we can go ahead and state that the integral of 3x minus 4 times e of x is equal to u of x times v of x, so that's exponential of x times 3x minus 4, which we could write as 3x minus 4 times exponential of x minus the integral of u of x times v dash of x, so that's exponential of x times 3, which is the same thing as 3 times e of x. We carry on, and this time we take care of the second integral on the right-hand side. That would be 3x minus 4 times exponential of x minus, well, the integral of 3e of x is just 3e of x, so minus 3e of x, plus some constant of integration, c. And we're done. That could be our final answer. But here we can also see that each of the terms here has an e of x, or exponential of x. So we may as well go ahead and write this in factored form. That would be 3x minus 4 minus 3 times e of x, plus some constant c. Finally, we can state the answer, and this integral is equal to 3x minus 7 times e of x, plus some constant of integration c. And there we have it. Once more, we've integrated a product of two functions using integration by parts. Let's look at one last example. Let's look at one last example in which we'll use integration by parts to evaluate a definite integral. Example 3. Let's use integration by parts to evaluate the definite integral from 0 to pi of 2x times sine of x. To begin with, let's just quickly remind ourselves of the formula for integration by parts when dealing with a definite integral. That would be the integral from a to b of u dash of x times v of x is equal to u of x times v of x, with lower limit a, upper limit b, minus the definite integral from a to b of u of x times v dash of x. So that's the formula we're going to use. Now, looking at this definite integral we have to evaluate, once more, we can see quite clearly that we're dealing with a product of two functions. We have 2x multiplying sine of x. And so we'll choose as the v inside our formula, we'll choose v to be 2x. And the reason for that is because we can see that if we differentiate 2x in the second integral over here, it'll turn into just 2. And that's easy. That simplifies things. We can also see that if we call sine of x u dash of x, then in the second integral of our formula, it'll turn into negative cosine of x, which doesn't necessarily simplify things, but it doesn't make them any more complicated. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to say let u dash of x equal to sine of x and v of x equal to 2x. Then u of x will equal to negative cosine of x, and v dash of x will equal to 2. Now, using that in our formula for the integration by parts, we have the definite integral from 0 to pi of 2x sine of x equals to in square brackets, u of x times v of x, so that's negative cosine of x times 2 of x, which is the same thing as negative 2x times cosine of x, from 0 to pi, minus the definite integral from 0 to pi of u of x times v dash of x, so that's negative cosine of x times 2, 
which is the same thing as negative 2 times cosine of x. We can get rid of those negatives there. We can see I'm subtracting a negative, so let's just do the following. That's negative 2x cosine of x 0 pi plus the definite integral from 0 to pi of 2 times cosine of x. Now, we can definitely evaluate that integral. We can evaluate 2 times cosine of x without any trouble. And that's the same thing as negative 2x times cosine of x from 0 pi plus, in square brackets, the integral of 2 cosine x, which would be 2 sine of x. Lower limit 0, upper limit pi. And now, since both of these have the same lower limit and same upper limit, we can write all of this inside one single pair of square brackets, leading us to negative 2x times cosine of x plus 2 sine of x, with lower limit 0, upper limit pi. And now we calculate. Well, if x equals to pi, that would be, for the upper limit, that would be negative 2 times pi times cosine of pi plus 2 sine of pi minus the evaluation at the lower limit, which we'll write in parentheses, negative 2 times 0 times cosine of 0 plus 2 times sine of 0. Well, 2 times 0 times cosine of 0, that's just 0. And since sine of 0 is 0, 2 times sine of 0 is also 0. So we can ignore that altogether. Looking back here, we know that cosine of pi is equal to negative 1. And sine of pi is equal to 0. So this all turns into negative 2 times pi times negative 1. And finally, we can state the answer. Negative 2 times pi times negative 1 is equal to 2 pi. And there we have it. We've just used integration by parts to evaluate that definite integral. So that's how to do integration by parts. The next thing we'll be seeing is how to deal with cases in which we'll need to use integration by parts two times, or even more. For instance, how to use integration by parts to integrate the function x squared times sine of x. And we'll be seeing that we'll in fact have to use integration by parts twice. For now, I hope this helps.